Three, two, one. Harsh Talker. Harsh, <laughs> firstly, I want to remind you, I've actually played against you. Uh, we were playing at a um, inter-college university tournament, and I was playing for University of Toronto Scarborough. And I think you were playing for, which college are you from? Sheridan. Sheridan. Yes, it was at UTM. I bowled against you. And, uh, did you get him out? I didn't get him out. <laughs> I wish I did. I would have had bragging rights that I've gotten a, a, a Canadian player out. Yeah. Uh, so honor to have you on the podcast. Uh, I saw your innings that you played against um, Mississauga live. 70 not out, finished the match. Tell me about that innings and tell me about your sort of progress in cricket to get you where you are here. First of all, I mean, I'm glad to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Um, and about that innings, like um, uh, Riza unfortunately got injured. Uh, so I was coming out of the, uh, after our bowling, um, I bowled well, so I was feeling a little, uh, feeling good. Yeah. Um, got Shoaib Malik out. <laughs> <laughs> Bragging rights. So, um, so I came out, I was feeling good. I had, I had a decent spell. And as soon as I'm coming out, uh, coach said, uh, coach Donovan said, Hey, Harsh, batting three, Riza's injured. So didn't really have much time to process. Were I you said, padded up? No, no, no. So I'm just walking out. Okay. And just as I was walking out, uh, is an innings break. Coach comes to me. Coach is like, you're batting three. Riza's injured. So you're going to bat three. Um, so didn't have much time to think. Uh, we, we lost a wicket early too. I think second over, first over. So I was right in the action, like without thinking much. I was just, I was hoping that, you know, I get hit a couple of boundaries here. Yeah. Uh, don't look like a foolish guy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe hit a couple of boundaries and then, and then we'll see what happens. So I, I got a boundary third ball. As soon as I went in, I played my second ball. I felt very good. Yeah. I saw the ball well. I defended it. I felt, okay, today is a good day. Ball's coming on nicely. Got a boundary early. And then from there, it kind of just flowed. I yeah. think till the 30th. Th th then I got to 30. I didn't realize. I was just going through my motion. I got to 30. Then uh, me and Rassi batted. Uh, again, innings was flowing. Uh, at the end, when it got close, then it was more like a bubble. I didn't know the crowd. I just felt like I was playing another league game. Um, and it was uh, fortunately we came on the winning side. It was very, very, very good feeling, and it was surreal. Like gave me a lot of confidence going forward. Like uh, the attention that you you get as a player after that is it's totally different. Like the the exposure that you get for, because of GT Twenty, it's huge. Like I didn't realize it until you actually come in it. Even in that innings after the innings, I I was in a bubble. Like I didn't know what was going on. I went everywhere. I did the presentation. I go to do a press conference. I'm in the team bus. Uh, like I still had my clothes on, sweaty clothes. I, the time I got to my hotel, that's when I realized, hey, like calm down. My dad called me. He started crying. <laughs> uh, yeah, my mom so that's a brown emotional. dad right there. But dad's crying. You, you yeah, did something yeah. amazing. It was unbelievable. You know, you were talking about the exposure. We were just speaking with Shane Bond outside, and he was the one who actually mentioned you just now. He was like, this this harsh talker kid. These locals are so they're playing so well. They're actually giving the international cricketers like a run for their money almost because. Yeah, go ahead. Funny story. So just, I was talking to the guy and Shane Bond said, hey, Harsh, nice to meet you. I was like, hey, hey, how are you? Shane Bond knows your name. I was shocked he knew my name. I'm not lying here. I was because like, he, he was speaking with me just yeah, like two seconds shocked. before that. And he was talking about how amazing you were playing and how amazing the local Canadians have been playing. Because the one thing that we've noticed, because we've been in the circuit for a while, obviously we didn't make it as, as big as you have, but we play enough cricket to understand that there is a passion and people here and the youngsters especially really want to play good cricket. It's just that we don't get that exposure that like even like the MLC is getting. Mm -hmm. We don't get that those kind of numbers. So for a local kid to come out and actually make a statement in the GT20 was huge for us, at least as fans. Yeah, see, Canadian cricket in general, as, as Shane Bond said, uh, Canadians are doing well this tournament. Yeah. I think almost every team has had Canadians stand out for them. And this is huge for Canadian cricket, the exposure that uh, they will bring the world. We got ODI status now. That was a huge thing that we needed because no one's going to care if you're playing against Malaysia or other other smaller teams because yeah. those cr that cricket is not good. Yeah. And, it, and if you do well there, it doesn't matter. Now, it's because of this ODI status, we'll get to play quality teams three years, even after GT20. We'll have... Well, World Cup qualifiers coming up in September. This tournament is huge for us. I, I think we can all build from this. And hopefully Canadian cricket can get back to like, we were top associate team in 2010, 2011 time when we made Canada the World Canada's like what, four World Cups? Three, three, four World Cups. Yeah. yeah. So there, there was a time we were, the, we were the, like the Scotland's and Ireland's not an associate now. But yeah. Scotland and Oman, we were there. Um, so... Puba's also vision is also get back there. And yeah. this tournament, obviously, as I said, the exposure you get, like shocking. When Shane Bond knew me, I was like, wow, <laughs> this is Shane Bond. Like, I, I just heard, uh, I was talking to Karishma. Karishma, She said, Brian Lara mentioned my name in her 
interview. I was like, Brian Nara knows my name. Forget him saying I'm good. Yeah. He knows my name. I was, I was shocked. I want to take a step back here. You mentioned that you were batting with Rossi Van Erdusen and previously also in the same innings with Fakhar Zaman. These guys are like the second and third ranked players in ODI cricket. One of the best in the game. So for you to be out there rubbing shoulders with them, having partnerships, talking about the game with them, how big is that? Unbelievable. Uh, Rassi, I'll tell you a story about Rassi. First time I met Rassi was in uh, Iceland ground. You guys know Iceland. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was the first year of GT20. Uh, he was not known that time. You remember like first year, he was not known. I saw him there. Uh, he was picking up the garbage after their practice. Like he was just collecting, like he was throwing all the water bottles out. I was like, wow, what a player, right? He's yeah. cleaning up. Like I was a young kid then, 2018. So I was like, wow, it's impressive. Then I saw him at a game. I went to King City to watch a game. I saw him bat. Me and my dad like, wow, this guy can bat. And then obviously Rassi, I got to play with him second year. Didn't get a game, but I was in the same squad as him. I was already a fan by that time because Rassi yeah. was by that time a world, world known name. So then to actually bat with him in this innings and him coming up to me between innings, he's like, between like when we're batting, he comes and he's like, hey, what are our boundary options? I'll tell him, hey, like I'm looking there, they're good options. Like him saying that, just so good. Some One time he asked me, he's like, uh, fucker Zaman batting. He came up to me and he said, what am I doing wrong? Fucker Zaman coming up to me, asking me what he's doing wrong. That's insane. Did you tell him? I, you know, what I was shocked. What do you say? <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, I think you're hitting the ball too hard. <laughs> Next ball hit for six. <laughs> he's yeah. like, that one I didn't hit too hard. Yeah. But like stuff like that, like for them, it's normal. But for me, I'm going to remember for life, like moments like that. Yeah. I will not forget that. Like yeah. something like that. It's huge. We have Mohamed Rizwan now. When Rizwan yeah. came in yesterday. I was at the door. It, so 15 minutes before the game started, he was going to come in. I was so excited. I had my uniform. We were going to go into field. I was waiting for him at the the dressing room door because I was that excited to just see him walk yeah. through. And it's, un as you said, number one batsman, number two batsman, number three. Like, it's unbelievable to have these guys in my in our team, especially Vancouver Knights. In GT20 is huge too. But to have them in your team is a different connection. Like, Con you can talk 100%. to them make friends with them and it's so cool. How hard is it to like hide the the super fandom that you have for these guys? Because at the end of the day, they're like players, right? And you, you want to make sure that you're treating them as, as players and not like, oh my God, you're the reason I, I picked up a bat or whatever. How hard is it to suppress that to make sure you're one-on-one you're -on -one with these people? Uh, like, I think they know I'm a fan. Like Rassi and them, and Rassi knows like I kind of idolize him after I've known him. But in the game, when you're playing, at the end of the day, when you're batting with them, it does feel a bit normal because yeah. you're just... You're batting with him. At that yeah. time, I'm thinking about my batting. When I'm bowling, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my job. If I'm bowling to Chris Gill or Colin Monroe or Shoaib Malik, at that time, I have a ball in my hand and I'm bowling to a batsman. So Truly. in the moment, it's normal. It's after you think about it that, hey, like I was bowling to Gill and Monroe. That seems uh, more hyped than in the moment, actually. My parents, everyone else finds it more hype in the moment than I do. Yeah. Because in that moment, I'm just playing cricket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean... Uh, the TT20 gives you a lot of exposure. There's millions of people watching on TV. There's thousands of people in the stands. How do you sort of focus on the ball that's coming to you while you're batting and sort of zone out everything else that's going on around you? So I, I heard cricketers say this, that they, when they bat, they get in a bubble. I, I kind of didn't understand that because we never had crowds. So I was like, um, maybe with a crowd is different. You happen in league cricket, but league cricket, there's no crowd. So it's a little different. But I felt it in this game. You, you sort of, when you're batting well, you don't think of the crowd there. Like you don't know that there's people watching me or that I'm on TV. At that moment, as I said, it's just the bowler is running in at you and you're batting. Mm -hmm. At that moment, it's just that. And when I'm bowling, it's just that, hey, I'm not trying to get hit for six here. That's, yeah. It's all that. It's cricket. Um, now, it, it could be 1,000 people, 2,000 people, 10,000 people. I think once you get start playing this level more often, once you play like, I played three games. Yeah. Um, the third game, I felt like, it already feels a bit normal, like mm -hmm. starting to feel normal, like crowd is there, but I'm just playing cricket. I'm playing what I played for the past 20 years of my life. Yeah. yeah. It's basically like that. I want to take another step back, like you said. Um, the journey as a Canadian cricketer to come up and then play for the GT20, play with your heroes. How, how was that for you? Because it's it's tough here in these conditions. It's We have six months of winter almost. And it's like it, we don't really get those same exposures with at least the weather-wise that other other countries do. Like the Caribbean have sun all, all the time. They can play cricket whenever they want. So to actually make it up the ranks and make it into the GT20 and then playing with these amazing players, how was that journey like for you? I mean, as you said, it's a lot of self-motivation is needed to play cricket in Canada. I think what happens is guys play till under-19 cricket. A lot of people play till under-19 cricket. Then... Then once that jump comes to senior senior cricket, people quit. 
I think you see most of our players quit cricket after under 19 level. Most of the guys. Yeah. So between that under 19 to that senior level is a lot of self motivation in this country, and especially back. I think there is more push now. I think people are seeing that hey, like these are our guys that are playing at this level, and they're getting. We have contracts now coming up with Cricket Canada, so there's more to look forward to. But before. It was a lot of self-motivation. You need your family support 100%. Like if your family's not supporting, it's very hard to play cricket in this country. Yeah. Um, like I, I played under 15 cricket for Canada. I, I've come through under 17. I've come under 19. I've come through the ranks of... Like I'm basically... I played all my cricket in Canada. Yeah. So I know the system like since the under 12 days, like playing at Ross Lord on mm. those very heavy outfields. Like I know those days I've played through that. So it's there are times when you don't get picked for the under seventeen camp. You feel like I should quit. What what? Why am I playing cricket? There's nothing to look for. You're not gonna become rich playing cricket in this country. Mm-hmm. But it's that motivation that hey, no, I want to play cricket because I love the sport. And then we'll see where where we where it takes us. You have to have a lot of self belief that I can do something that maybe others haven't done till now in this country. That belief has to be there. And then just obviously, as I said, my family, my dad, my mom, my my sister, they've always supported me. Um, that's huge. Without their support, it's very easy to quit for me. Yeah. Um, did so you ever have a backup plan? I did. I I, I work. I yeah. work full time. Just before the tournament started, I did IT. I, I'm yeah. in database. Uh, so I did. I'm. I did a data software and, uh, and database and network engineering degree from um, Sheridan. Sheridan. Yeah. So I I had a full time job for the last like four years. Just so like having your day job and then. And then playing cricket, like it's almost like being Batman, kind of, right? Are you right now on vacation, or is this, are you pursuing cricket full time now? Uh, we have contracts now. We we got cricket Canada contracts, so now okay. I I just quit just before GT twenty. Hey, congratulations, man! <laughs> I don't want to get too personal, but is it financially viable to be a full time cricketer in Canada? I know, like in Ireland, uh, a lot of the players there they have full time jobs, and then they take breaks to play for Ireland. So it's the same here, or do you think going forward it's going to be different? I think now we're getting to a point where I'm not saying. Everybody in this country is at a point where they can quit their jobs, but there, there are a few lucky ones uh, or the, 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 the few contracts that are good enough. You obviously have to work part time. I'm not saying that the, the contracts are good enough to, to not put do you anything it, yeah. after. I, I will still work part time at the same company that I've been, but I'm going to work part time. It's not full time. And that's a big, big yeah, difference. Yeah, because you get more, more time it's, for cricket. Yeah, it's a huge difference working part time than full time. Yeah. And then what does the, like, the future look like for you? Are you going to p- pursue leagues other, in other countries, internationally? Um, um, are we going to see you in the PSL? <laughs> maybe. I mean, look, uh, leagues and stuff, it's not in my control. What I can do is I can keep performing. Yeah. Uh, right now, what I'm looking forward to is we have a, a World Cup qualifiers coming up in Bermuda in September. Uh, we want to make the World Cup huge for us as a country to get in the World Cup. We have ODI status uh, uh, games coming up from February next year. With lots of cricket. I think we have 50 ODIs or 50 T20s in the next three, four years. Well, that's so way more than Pakistan. Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cricket. Yeah. Um, leagues and stuff, obviously, I would love to play in the CPL, PSL. IPL. Name, a- any league. Like yeah, yeah. IPL, even my names in the draft, I'll be so excited. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> but that's something that's not in my control. What I can do is just keep hopefully keep performing uh, hopefully keep scoring runs keep bowling well and then leagues like if it happens it happens i would love it like it's a dream but yeah canadian cricket i know this is there and we have a long way to go forward as someone who sees that involved in cricket from the grassroots level like under 15 under 19s and then now for the national team how do you think cricket in this country in canada how can it become a mainstream sport like hockey is like basketball or baseball or do you think it has a chance to get there I, I think it's hard to compare with the main like it's hard to think that cricket will ever become hockey let's like we got to be uh, reasonable here hockey is like Canada is hockey we love hockey basketball since the Raptors have won it's shot up so much yeah so I think once the country the national team once they start doing well if we start making the World Cup consistently we start doing one well the World Cup I think it is the fastest growing sport in Canada to get to where hockey and basketball is, I think it's very tough. But even if we get to where, let's say soccer. Soccer is not huge in cricket yeah. in Canada. Yeah. But even if you get to that level, and that's what happened with soccer. You, you, like the, the women's team started winning. They won silver or something in the Olympics. Yeah. And then it's, it's the women's soccer is actually what got soccer famous in Canada. Yeah. So it's something like that. Like if the Canadian national team can win in World Cups or even get to the quarterfinals, semis, something like that, some major moment like that, it will shoot up the popularity. I still think it's tough to get to hockey and basketball and stuff because I think this, those have been there for long. Like, it's like you think India, you think like hockey. When are India they going to be good will, in basketball? Will, yeah. Like, yeah, like you can't expect it to come to cricket's level. Yeah. But I think we can get to a point where it's people know about cricket. It, we're getting there. 
but it's a long way to go still. One of the biggest criticisms of uh, cricket in Canada is that it's just an immigrant sport and that only immigrants play it and the locals are not playing. By locals, I mean like not immigrants, right? Like we, we immigrated from Pakistan. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you, you immigrated from India as well or your father, your parents did. So like this is why it's so enri- enriched in our, in our culture. But the locals that have been here for hundreds of years, they're not taking interest in it. That's How do we get involved? involved? I mean, cricket was the national sport of Canada. It was the yeah. first national sport. There's a pitch in Ottawa. I've played a match there uh, beside the, the, the parliament house. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's back to your question. Like, how do we get them involved? I think that that's the main thing. You have to get the local, like not the immigrants. Um, you have to get the local crowd involved. And for that to happen, as I said, the national team needs to do well. There needs to be more uh, media surrounding, like media meaning you need to have, uh, CBC's obviously doing yeah. these games, which is huge. Uh, you need to have more of that. You need to have, when we, when we got ODI status in Namibia just this year, CBC didn't report it. CTV didn't report it. Nobody reported that Canada's got this ODI status. Uh, I think that stuff, if that starts happening... I don't think they understand what that means. Uh, no one uh, yeah. understood what it meant. I, yeah. Even guys playing cricket in Canada didn't kind of understand what it meant. Mm. So it's like that awareness is to come. GT20 is here for a month. 20 days. Sure. It's there for 20 days. After that, it's the national team that needs to be followed. GT20 is a huge platform. You can get it going. The Blue Jays had a cricket event just now, yeah. which is huge too. Blue yeah. Jays doing something like that is huge. I think stuff like that, we can get the crowd involved. They can tell them, hey, cricket is just like baseball. Yeah. Maybe a little different, but it's very similar to baseball. Like, it's a very interesting game. You can come by and play. And if yeah. we get that crowd, that's when cricket will grow in this country. We're a grassroots podcast as well. We're trying to be as big as, like, the great cricketers in Australia, right? Or beer biceps is in India. And we're, we're facing the same amount of uh, pressures because... We're doing our podcast in English. We're trying to target a North American, UK audience. And we've been feeling the same same pushback is that it's easier to get the crowds from back home to follow us. But engaging the locals is tough. And, and I feel like what you said is correct. As soon as we start sort of branching out and getting the mainstream media in, it'll it'll be it'll be good for everybody else as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you just came from the gym working out. Uh do you ever work out with any of the players? Do you see what their fitness routines are? What their diets are? Are you following a specific diet? You look very fit. And to score that innings of 70 in a very humid condition shows the level of fitness that you have. So how have you like interacted with players, the foreign players, with how they work out, what their fitness regimes are? So basically, uh, we have... Um we're getting more fitness trainers in the Canadian team. We're getting like... Uh, I was just working out with Shady. I don't know if you guys know. Yeah, Shady Kishwani. Yeah. He, he's very very knowledgeable person. So I'm, I was just working with him. He, he gives us all this stuff to work. And I think that stuff is needed. Uh, at home, I'll have my personal trainer that I go to the gym with. Um, uh, in the national team, we'll have Puba bring in some guys. We went to Sri Lanka. We had a trainer there who, who taught us a few things. So basically, it's stuff like that. But we need more of that. I think we, we need a, a trainer for the national team regularly to, to help us even when we have injuries or some things that we're working on to have a guy that specifically cricket related because you go to the gym you have personal trainers they're not cricket related people no. they don't really understand the exact muscles that are used they just understand hey throwing okay here, this is the issue but if you have cricket related people like Shady um, even I, Montreal I have the guy uh, Sunny all these people are cricket related people they have a lot of knowledge we can use them more uh, we can even they can get trained by having even international physios come True. and train them and, and, and stuff so yep. Stuff like that. That's how I train, basically. I'll have guys for like Shady. I'll watch his videos. I'll have Sunny ask him a few things. I have my trainer. So I'll combine all that and then basically work out in, in that because way. Because modern cricket has become extremely competitive. Like the regiment that Virat Kohli is on, like nobody else can do that, right? And But, but then you see those results. So you're like, this is the greatest player in the world because he takes his fitness so seriously as opposed to other players. I saw Rizwan yesterday as well. He's, he's very lean. He has a lot of muscle. At the same time, like for him to... Flew fly in from Sri Lanka, drive from the airport to the ground, score a fifty, and be so nonchalant about it. That is insane to me. Unbelievable. Um, you know, he wanted to play. It's not like we uh, the team asked him, "Hey, can you play the game?" Yeah. Today? He said, "I will play the game today." He wanted to play. He said, "They asked him, do you want water? Do you want coffee?" He's like, "No, give me a bat." Like, <laughs> oh, on, on the on the Rizwan, car ride back. Actually, and he's coming off a as you said, sixteen hour flight from from Columbia, Dubai yeah. to the fourteen hour flight from Dubai to okay. to, to Toronto. And he's coming to play. And, and like, uh, guys were like, yo, we complained that we have a game yesterday. We're like, we're complaining. We don't want to play tomorrow. Yeah. It's like, there's no complaints. These guys do not complain. They, they do their thing. We, we sometimes complain in local cricket that we don't have the facilities and we don't have this. That's why we're not doing it. But looking at this, there is no complaints. You, you get on with your work. You have your 
you have your schedule. He said in the last 10 years, he's been home like 40 days. Yeah. Rizwan, Rizwan said this to us. I was like, wow, 40 days. We com- we, we're almost home all the time, but sometimes we complain we're not home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, it shows us that there's no complaints. These guys don't complain. They get on. Even when we have bad practices, like wickets are not good. Canadians will complain. These guys do not complain at all. They'll do, they, they might not bat in the pitch, but they'll do their throwdowns without complaining. Mm-hmm. Yep. Totally. Okay, Harsh. Uh, it was great having you on. Uh, we're very excited to see where your career goes in the future. We wish you all the best. And uh, yeah, best best of luck for the future. No, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your time. Take care. Take care.